In this video, I'm gonna be doing a hydroponics experiment I've been wanting to do for a very long time. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump, and I love all things to do with chilies. I love growing them, I love experimenting with them, I love coming up with new hot sauces and other spicy recipes and sharing all of that with you guys. So if you enjoy any of that, make sure you are subscribed down below. This experiment is something I've been thinking about for a very long time, but it's not something I could really put into practice until I moved to the new place. What I'm gonna be doing is combining a few different hydroponic methods. A little bit of Dutch bucket, a little bit of ebb and flood, and a little bit of drip irrigation. And I'm going to be experimenting with this to try and optimize the way I grow. Uh, the other hydroponic systems that I've built in the past, they've done a great job, but they aren't practical for the way that I grow. And I'm hoping that with what I'm gonna be trying, it's going to change that and we're going to have something that's new, innovative and just very useful. These are the three buckets we're going to be using, just standard containers. Again, that's part of my plan. I want to reuse what I already have. I have hydrogen in here already, but that's not all that's going to be in here. This one here, I'm going to leave as hydrogen and hydrogen is just expanded clay pebbles. So I'm going to leave that just as pure hydrogen then I'm going to be doing one of these buckets with hydrogen mixed in with some vermiculite, which has water retention properties. And then we're going to also be doing this other bucket with some perlite. So, I don't know why that's in there. So perlite is not really known as water retaining, but it will create more surface area for the water to stick to. The basic concept is I'm going to be using drippers that are going to then drip water through here. These are my standard drippers that I'm using throughout my entire system. They're basically four liter per hour drippers. So not a lot of water and that's the challenge. Typically with ebb and flood systems, you flood these things very quickly. They absorb a lot of water. The roots can get to it. The hydrogen keeps some of that water available and the plants can use that for the next few hours until you flood it again. With a drip system, it's going to work a little differently. The addition of perlite and vermiculite, I'd prefer not to use that because cleaning out hydrogen, these clay pebbles, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's a lot easier than cleaning out hydrogen as well as being mixed in with something like perlite or vermiculite. But if the plants are going to respond better by having those mixed in, then that's maybe a route we have to go down. talk through the rest of the system quickly before we go and plant the plants into these pots. This here is just a standard plant tray that I use. I've drilled a hole at the end and we have that for overflow. Down there is a 30 liter drum that I'm using to keep the hydroponic nutrients in. That pump is the pump that I was using in my last home and the reason I'm using that it's a bit overkill, it's a bit big, but the reason I'm using it is because it puts out 30 or well, 25 to 30 psi. And that's what I need for the drip irrigation. You can't run drippers on high pressure pumps. And those tend to be the cheaper pumps that you can get. We'll have this as an overflow so we can kind of reduce the pressure. So we don't have too much pressure or too much flow going through to the drippers and don't work the pump too hard. So that's just to adjust to allow water to come back into the reservoir. What that'll also do is aerate the water a little bit and mix up the nutrients, keep the water from being stagnant. And that'll be switched on by a cool little gadget that I got from UbiBot. You'll probably remember UbiBot from a video I did recently showing you some cool IoT devices to monitor temperature and uh, all that sort of thing. It's really cool. I told them about my little project that I'm doing here and I asked them if they had anything to help me out. and they definitely came through. The first one is, like I mentioned, the plug. This is just a smart plug. Um, 
what's nice with this is it integrates with their entire UbiBot platform, so I'm quite keen to see how that works out, but it's just a smart plug. And I'll be using that to set the pump up so that it's running regularly, probably on like a three hour or four hour interval, but we'll decide on that later. They sent me some other cool stuff and I'm pretty happy about this. So they sent me another one of these devices. It's a similar device to what I had uh, in the last UbiBot video. And you'll recognize it because I think it's pretty much the same frame. There you go. It's the GS2 model. And what's really cool about this is I can use an EC probe as well as a pH probe. And if you've ever done hydroponics, you'll know how cool that is. Being able to monitor this remotely, that's very, very cool. And uh, basically the pH probe, it's testing the alkalinity or the acidity of the water, making sure you're at the right levels. It'll give you alerts if you hit thresholds, things like that. And it's all part of the same interface as the UbiBot interface that I showed in the previous video. And I'm keen to check that out. This video, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how this all works because I gotta figure out for myself. One of the worst things about hydroponics is having to keep track of your EC and your pH of your nutrients, making sure that you have enough nutrients in there, knowing when to change it out, things like that. Uh, the weather can make a big difference, how quickly the plants are growing, how quickly they transpire, how much water is in there. Yeah, there's a, a lot that can uh, affect just how it works. I'll probably get into more techie detail on these items on my second channel, which is more of a techie channel. Uh, this video is more about the experiment that I'm doing and these things are just gonna help me uh, do it in a more effective way, I think. One other thing they sent me, because I did say in the last video where I was talking about UbiBot and the system is the device, the one that I have, I actually still have this running in my greenhouse. It's up there on the side of the greenhouse and it's still sending, uh, sending data back and forth so I can actually keep an eye on things. This is, a, well, it has a battery. It has, I think it's a 3000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, 2,900 milliamp hour battery that's in there. So you can charge it up, but it only lasts for about three or four days. And the Hubibots guys saw that I said that in the video and they said, well, hey, we can send you a solar panel. And they did. And um, I'll probably use this on the pH and EC meter. But yeah, very cool. Thank you so much to Ubibots. Uh, you know, th they really have a lot of cool kit. Um, and they've been good to me and the channel, helped me to bring more content. So go check them out. Uh, I believe there is a 5% discount. If you mention my name, when you're checking out anything over $250, uh, you get 5% off. And uh, any purchases you make there also, just transparency, because uh, I'm not getting paid to talk about these, but any purchases you make through UbiBot, um, there's a link down in the description. I get a small kickback off that, uh, no extra cost to yourself. But again, anything that I get off that helps me to do more of these sort of experiments. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, I wanna get to actually using it. I was just so keen to open these things up and I didn't wanna open it up until I did a video because I love gadgets. Anyway, let's put that aside for now. We don't need this just yet. Uh, we will need the plug because I need to start cycling the nutrients through these systems as soon as I have it built. So we will get into that, but the other stuff, yeah, keep an eye out for a video on my second channel and we'll go into some techie, geeky detail on how those are all set up and working. So we've given these a good rinsing. You can see the roots are pretty much exposed. There's a little bit of soil and stuff inside there still, but that's not a problem. And that's ready now to go in hydroponics. So if you're gonna be doing this for just a normal hydroponics system and you wanna get ready for it and you're taking it from soil into hydroponics, then yeah, that's all you need to do. Go and give it a good spraying down and clean off the roots and there you go. But we need to get this into a medium and get it wet again because it is quite a warm day and this is not gonna be very happy if it stays dry. Let's have a look, we've got three plants here and I think this, they're all actually super hot, so they're all capsicum chinens. Uh, this one is pine and yellow lantern and we can see there already is a pod on there. Actually there's pods on all three of these plants. Uh, this one here is my big black mama and you can see those are gnarly looking 
pods. And the last one here, I know exactly which one this is. This is one of my crosses. Uh, it's a super hard cross that I've been working on for a little while. I have a few of them growing in the large greenhouse at the moment, Big Chump. And uh, we're going to be doing this one here inside one of these pots. For the initial nutrient mix, I'm going to use a standard three-part nutrient. I've used this successfully in the past, so I know it works. It's basically going to be used just for the first nutrient batch. But after that, I'm going to change over to something else that I've been working on for a little while as well. And that's also going to be part of this experiment. I'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, but if that nutrient mix works, so the one that I'll use after this, as well as this new hydroponic system, then I have a very efficient way to grow next year. So I'm really hoping it does work. Well, that's filling up. This here is an EC meter, uh, or an EC truncheon. And this is typically what people will use when they don't have something that can automate the whole thing like this. And I mean, it does a good job and I'll be using it here and I'll use it to double check what's going on with this machine, making sure it's accurate. But if it is accurate and I can rely on it, then it just makes life so much easier. Be interesting to see how long this lasts as well because with the system that I'm doing with the dripper I'm hoping that it's going to use less liquid so there'll be less waste but again we'll see maybe there's not enough liquid I don't know fun to experiment anyway let's take a look at what the EC is so it's got about a 2 EC could go a little bit higher uh, you want to aim for around 2.5 Two is probably the minimum I would go, especially at this stage of growth. So I probably will dose this up a little higher. I think for the initial mix, that'll be okay. I'll definitely be going stronger when we do the next batch. Yeah, that's about 2.2 there. That's fine. We're just going to flood these systems just to give them a good soaking and then uh, we'll start the dripper system in a little while Oof, there's a lot of a lot of dirt coming through here that's not ideal uh, I had cleaned these off but um, it seems like some more dust has appeared that's fine I have a filter on the intake of the pump so it should be just fine with it well the overflow is working that's good. <laughs> now, ideally, I'd have this flush with this system here. That just means that there's going to be liquid left behind in here. Um, not ideal, like I said, but what it is doing is it's catching all of the, the grit that's coming out from these buckets. So that's probably a good thing. So let's switch the pump on and hope that we don't have water spraying everywhere. That's a good sign. You can hear the drippers working. You can see that that's dripping through nicely. These are pressure compensated drippers that you can easily clean. You just pop off this end and you can give it a good rinse, which is very nice. Keep an eye out for that if you are going to use dripper systems. Make sure that you can clean them out because it's a pain in the backside to keep these clear. 
These drippers are four liters per hour. You can get ones that can put out more water, but these are what I currently use for the rest of my plants. And four liters per hour means 333 milliliters for every five minutes. And that is around about a liter every 15 minutes. So that's what I'll be doing. My schedule will be every three hours, maybe every four hours. We'll see how the weather's doing. Just give me one sec. I want to switch off the pump. It's making a hell of a noise. Much better. There will be update videos on this, uh, at least one later on in the season to see how this experiment has worked out and I'll give you the results. If you want to see updates on these sort of things uh, in between these videos or you want to ask me questions personally, then think about joining up on Patreon or on YouTube memberships. It gives you access to my private Discord and I spend a lot of time on there discussing experiments like this and you guys can ask me some questions and things like that. It's a great little community, uh, a lot of friendly people, very knowledgeable as well. Well, and we really have a good laugh and it helps the channel out it helps me keep doing these videos and uh, you know coming up with experiments like this which hopefully if this works if this experiments works and it works the way I think it might then it could really change the way that things are done especially for myself I have a lot of plants and if I can move over to this system it's just a complete game changer and I'm sure that it could help you guys out as well Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Until then, stay spicy.